गुड आफ्टरनून नमस्कार दिस इज जॉर्ज एब्राहम आई एम द सीईओ ऑफ स्कोर फाउंडेशन वेलकम टू दिस सेशन ऑफ आई वे एनकाउंटर्स आई वे एनकाउंटर में आपका स्वागत है टुडे सेशन इज विथ आवर गेस्ट सौरभ प्रसाद हु इज अ फाइनल सेमेस्टर स्टूडेंट ऑफ ट्रिपल आई टी इन डेली Uh, he is a person who comes from jharkhand and uh, he was uh, denied the opportunity of studying maths and science and as a result he moved uh, to dehradun where he did uh, his class 10 from and again because there was a problem with uh, studying maths and science in dehradun he moved to delhi and he finally graduated uh, he finished he finished his schooling in the science stream and then he uh, wrote the competitive exam and uh, uh, joined triple it and uh, the good news is that next year in july he will be joining microsoft so uh, it is a pleasure uh, saurav that uh, you are with us today karwa meri baat hello haan ji carry on george yeah so uh, so it's a pleasure sort of to have you in in this iway encounters edition and uh, we do look forward to hearing your experiences as you see uh, the majority of people understand english but there are a few people i guess who do not understand english so you might want to repeat your few key key statements in hindi as well so over to you um, and also i like to mention here uh, gentlemen that and ladies that uh, iwe is a knowledge resource on living life with blindness and uh, uh, our website is iwe.org.in iwe is e y e w a y.org.in we run a helpline where we try and answer your questions the helpline is 1800 Five three two zero four six nine. The the toll free number as well as the email ID is given in the chat box. So if you would like to contact us at any point of time, uh, do feel free to call or write to us. We also do organize these IBA encounters once a month. So if you are registered with us, you will definitely get an email or a WhatsApp. informing you of this uh, the next session so um, having said all this let me hand you over to our to our speaker uh, saurav prasad hello everyone can you all hear me yeah yes, we can sir, we can hear you most of them will be on mute so they may not be able to answer but if there is a question and answer happening then they can unmute themselves and speak to you sure ma'am so thank you so much sir for the introduction and uh, like getting me providing me this opportunity to interact oh, yeah. with, uh, with you all so i'll be sharing about the overall journey of yeah. how, how i went yeah, do sir has already shared um about the um this process where we study maths and science and go ahead there are challenges there are denials but still we proceed there are problems in terms of accessible inaccessibility and um, sometimes also the hurdles that we get to find in in terms of the geographical or financial barriers so first of all i'll try to uh, explain the journey that i went and after that i'll be talking about uh, students who are studying these days and if they want to pursue math and science in their education how they can go ahead and what should be a uh, an ideal road map for them if they want to proceed in this stream uh, in terms of re- available resources in terms of like available schools and sometimes about the laws also that we have because you know we get to find a couple of incidences where our students are sometimes denied admissions in the schools and that's how they can't proceed with these subjects and uh, choose to go with the human and humanities stream itself later on i'll be co- covering a little bit about the employment opportunities that we have 
and if they want to go after class uh, 12 for, for for abroad education how they can apply for that and what a, what are the principles or the rules for the a student who is visually challenged are there any provision uh, for uh, taking the consideration of accessibility um, taking the point of uh, like uh, other needs if they have are there any rules for that so i'll be covering them as well and then i'll be talking about uh, um, the barriers that we are getting to face due to the less uh, representation of the visually challenged people in this entire uh, stem field basically math science technology or engineering field so let me get uh, start with a, a small journey that i went through and uh, then I'll be talking in between about the transition that happened because earlier I started learning math and science with the uh, traditional modes like using braves and those technology and then move, moved on to the technology driven learning. So what was the difference between both of them and how, uh, uh, what was, uh, how it became so easy or still if there are challenges, how we can overcome them. So we'll, I'll be talking about them. So I was born with a congenital uh, disease called glaucoma. What happens is when you grow up, uh, the eyesight keeps on decreasing and at some point it gets completely finished. So when I was in class uh, third, that time uh, it was very difficult for me to proceed from that school anymore. So my parents uh, looked for a special school called St. Michael School for the Blind. It's located in Ranchi. I went there. I completed uh, till class seventh, but uh, as we know that their resources were very limited. I'll be talking about all these points, why resources are limited and why there are issues. So um, since I was not able to groom over there and I realized that I have to learn more, there are challenges, there are less uh, resources. So then I got to know about one of the school, which is located at Dehradun. Uh, I went there. Um, there was some uh, entrance test and I qualified them and I got uh, admission in class eight. So that was one of the, you know, like very, some of the like challenging part of my life because in class six and seven, my mathematics base was not really that good. And when I entered in class eight, getting all those concepts, uh, it was really, really, really difficult for me to grab then those things in the first two classes. So uh, one principle or one, you know, like one common line, which was given by my mother was, if you don't understand anything, just say ki samajh mein nahi aaya. Just tell your teacher that, that you don't understand. Because if you don't tell tell him, you will be losing losing anyway. So what happened after that is that in the first class, teacher comes in the class and he starts teaching. And he taught the first concept. Then he asked, like, are you all clear with this? Everyone said yes. And I raised my hand and I say, sir, mujhe samajh mein nahi aaya. He came to me. He made me uh, understand the concept. He explained those things. Then he went again. He taught another concept. And then he again asked, is everyone uh, all right with this? Everyone said yes. And I was like, sir, mujhe abhi bhi samaj mein nahi aaya. He again came. He did explain that concept to me and went again. He taught the third concept and same, same thing got repeated. But this time he got completely fired. He said like... Uh, I mean, uh, he just said like, Bhagwan itni badi dimag diya, just utilize it. What, what exactly are you doing here? So that, that day I realized like there are only two options. Either I'll like forgive, I, I'll just, uh, I'll lose or go back. And the other option is to work hard and see if I can do. So uh, I had some extra classes from my seniors and I, and I really had it. Uh, I really had uh, started getting classes from them and spent uh, learning uh, mathematics and these tools. So some of the, you know, like you, the resources that I found very, very useful that I did not have earlier access to were Braille books. Now I had Braille books for all the subjects and so for mathematics. Was it accessible? Yes, it was accessible. So uh, to what extent is well, it was accessible? So in Braille, there is a technique called Namit Braille that allows you to write the equation symbols and uh, all the like uh, the stuff that you have in mathematics now I, i'm sure that you might be thinking what about diagrams they are not they can't be uh, drawn in, in a braille book right okay but there were a few books uh, published by aicb who tried drawing those diagrams using their braille machine itself and using those braille dots how did they do that 
that's this is pretty easy just using those six dots notations and they did draw those diagrams to some extent which which could be done at that point of time though, though 3d figures were not not drawn at all but all 2d figures were clearly drawn on them and i got access to those books so there were chapters on you know like lines and angles and like triangles properties of triangles so while studying through them i was able to follow through all the concepts without getting the help from anyone else from outside and this is how i started you know spending time the whole night and working ahead so at the end of the like class i got uh, the highest marks in class and that was something that really made me believe that uh, if we follow some consistency and we have the resources right resources and right guidance so we'll be able to like accomplish the things if we are sincere about it that's how it began it began and then in class 9th and 10th there were a few other tools that we were using one of them was geometry kit okay it's, it is it is um, it is like prepared by nibh there's there there is an institute called mba so they do prepare this geometry kit um like so now there are there might be questions how how easy is it to use and like are there any issues when we use it so honestly speaking you will be able to draw all your 2d diagrams and understand them the way other people draw it but there are certain limitations what are the limitations limitations are in such a way that it takes time it take, it requires a lot of care while you are using it because there are small small pins and you need to take care of them while you are drawing if if it get displayed uh, displaced from its location or it gets fall down so it will take you like time to again uh, you know like look at the floor where it is and find it so you need to uh, have extra care for that and plus time but the guaranteed part is that you will be able to draw those diagrams and accomplish the uh, 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 the task that you have been given and so in the uh, in the exams also we were not given any other assistant like in terms of uh, a scribe or something so we used to write our exams by our own and uh, when i was in class uh, 10th it was 2017 and that time uh, it was not like compulsory to for you to give the board exam that time we were following that routine you know uh, fa1 fa2 summative 1 summative 2 so that that's the time when i was giving all my exams in braille itself and uh, tackling those questions using geometry kit and uh, like drawing them even in exams and they got accepted and this is how i was going through class 9th and 10th one thing i really found common at that time was no one was really interested to proceed with math and science after class 10 all of them were either talking about humanities and opting other fields like uh doing some uh, courses like sociology or other humanity subject humanity subjects but none of them was really uh, curious about studying math and science so that time i got to know about some of the people like kartik sane and how he did uh, complete his education in uh, like ma taking math and science and went ahead so that st uh, stroke me a lot and i thought like i will also go with this stream but after class 10th when it came uh, to getting like access to study these subjects i went to the administration and i i had a chat with the uh, director and i had uh, had a like a talk with her, with her assistant as well so when i explained her that I, i when i explained him that i want to go with math and science stream but these subjects are not available in our school so can you do something for us and along with me there are other students who will also come if you allow these sub subjects in class 11th and 12th so their response were very genuine and very common like uh, we don't have that much of recommendation and so we don't have resources and so we won't be able to provide you any such uh, facility from here um, but you are anyway feel free to go with humanities uh, that made the task a little bit disappointing um, but like i i asked my father i we went to uh, like uh, delhi and uh, we had a communication with one of the organization called national association for the blind and we were uh, planning to get uh, admission in dps like delhi public school uh, but the issue was, was that uh, that came in terms of financial problem because that time the demanded fee was too much that my parents uh, could not afford that much at that point of time so we finally went back to uh, our old school and i uh, started continuing my education from class 11 it was july uh, i guess third or fourth 2017 
when my principal sir called me and he asked me like if you want to uh, if you want to uh, like really go with science stream we will help you and the reason why he was also you know like uh, like uh, supportive was that 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 time i had uh, gotten the like uh, highest grade in my class 9.8 3 gpa so he had this thing in mind and he really wanted me to pursue these subjects because uh, he found that there are potential and definitely resources are provided if opportunity is given so there can be ways so he then initiated this communication again with the national association for the blind and this time they did allow me to uh, like go there and they, but, but by this time uh, admissions in dps school was closed so there was one more school called tego international school i got to uh, i got to uh, have admission over there and there was some instances and all those stuff so i had uh, access to the uh, classroom but this time instead of going with a braille slate they strictly enforced that if you come you'll have to come with a laptop or with a like desktop computer we won't allow you to go with this uh, braille and these things but i was really uh, uncomfortable at that time because till now i was studying with uh, everything in braille okay i was writing in braille i was reading in braille i was reading a lot of books in braille so there was a kind of like change that i observed and also uh, a kind of visual you know memory pictorial memory that you have because when you are performing calculations uh, many people ask me how do you do all these things so whenever i think for some calculation some steps there's a like image of every word that gets created automatically in the brain because when we were studying braille there was a, a definite picture for every word for every character that we used to study now here while uh, switching to the to the audio mode or pdf mode we were really not getting to touch those those words okay we were just listening to those words so here comprehension became a li little bit harder for me in between because when you are switching to a laptop for the first time or getting used to this technology so what happens is that uh, you are trying to focus you are trying to understand the stuff but sometimes the text to speech you are not able to uh, your your ears are really not tuned to them or even after fo focusing at them you are not able to visualize those concepts so that was the difference that i you know that 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 difficulty i had that time but they said that everyone is doing and if you really do continue with this you will be able to uh, go ahead and uh, be completely convenient with that uh, stuff uh, with the, the resources that you are going but you know like for the first month two months three months it was difficult i was trying to uh, switch to laptop mode and uh, that half yearly results came out and uh, that time my principal ma'am they just said she just said like aise aise bachche se hum fees hi na le because uh, the marks were good at that time and uh then my principal sir also called me from my previous school and he asked me do you want to come back i said no i want to go ahead so that was the time when i was really switching from this braille these braille tools to the uh, technical tools now here also there were challenges for the diagrams and writing mathematics so for my ent entire class 11th i kept on writing braille and make uh, i kept on writing all my mathematics no mathematics notes in my braille, braille itself using a brailler because brailler i'll tell you what the difference is brailler provides you an opportunity to read and write simultaneously let's say i solved one step now i can read that step and i i can simultaneously after that write the next step but in laptop what you will file find initially very difficult is when you hear one entire step and you go down but uh you will forget what was there in in the upper line then you will again press up and you will again in, uh, hear the entire uh like uh, equation what you have written then again you will go go down you may forget so it's really you know difficult for the initial time to have a a, a completely sy symmetry between writing and reading so you will find it really difficult but as you go ahead um everything will come come to hand as it happened with me in class 12 um yeah in class 12 uh, i is completely uh, i till that time i had completely switched to the laptop mode and uh, mathematics chemistry physics and these all subjects i was doing in my laptop only um what happened is that like you might be thinking about diagrams so for diagrams there are a few like there were there were a few iit people from iit 
Delhi who draw some of the diagrams from the specific chapters that I required. Like there was a there was a chapter uh, on ray ray optics. There was there was a, a chapter on wave optics. So those diagrams they did draw for me and delivered it to me. So uh, just beside every figure there was a figure number. So whenever I used to you know get those figures in book while reading in the word word format, so it used to it used to say let's say figure four point two. So when I uh, matched those figures and the text description that I had in book, I was not I mean I was able to completely follow the, the text and the um, uh, figure, and I did not have any any issue with that. Um, that's the way I realized that this this can be you know drawn as a model. to prepare the diagrams for every chapter that we have in ncert as a file and give it to the students when they are reading book uh, in the, through their uh, braille or sorry through their uh, pdf or word document figures are not there but they will be able to uh, locate the figures based on the numbers and simultaneously follow the instructions and understand the uh, understand and comprehend the concepts whatever is there there might be sometimes when there are 3d figures or there are very complicated figures that time they may require the assistant assistance of their uh, 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 teacher or other friend so that time they can take but i think 80 85% task they will be able to achieve if such uh, diagrams are available for every chapter that we have for like uh, like every every classes from 6 to 12 for mathematics and science uh, as well now it comes to writing or for like second abhi aur kya writing is being sorry do you have any question uh, sorry sir bhai put him on mute maybe once you're done speaking we'll take questions from them sure 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 so i'll just wrap like i once i complete then you can yes. ask me questions and i'll respond to that uh, sure. yeah so i was talking about physics and chemistry so there are you know like in chemistry in especially in uh, organic chemistry you have a lot of diagram that you need to draw like uh, all those compounds you need to have a structure of them so how do we do that like in a laptop what happens is cbse has provided you a provision to remember the iupac or the common name of those uh, compound and complex structures you need not to draw them exactly but it is good if you have a, an idea about how those resonance and the electromagnetic effects happens and how do those electrons trans gets transport from uh oh, one one part to the another so if you have the clarity of these ideas it won't be difficult for you to remember the names and visualize them while writing the exam you just need to tell, you just need to write the name iupsc name of those structures and it will be accepted in your answer sheet um same happens with the practicals for physics and chemistry um when you, when it comes to practicals they'll give you set of questions like a viva and you'll have to answer them while uh, so when you when you are in the class for physics experiments i used to be there and i used to uh, do some of the uh, experiments but in chemistry they won't allow me to uh, touch the chemicals and use them so i used to be there in the group what used to have what what happened is that uh, there are couple of tasks in the group okay not just a single task of performing the experiment so while they are doing some experiments i used to note down the readings and do the calculations and at the end i have a fair idea of what has happened and this is how i contributed with my group as well and uh, in, in at the time of examination everybody was given a salt or something let's say for, for chemistry i'm talking uh, everywhere uh, other students were given a salt or they have to do some uh, volumetric analysis or like salt analysis they have to recognize the salt for me they used to give me some salt and i had to write all its like uh, like what's the entire procedure to conduct this experiment they would give me some sort of, let's say ammonia so they would say like write the entire procedure of uh, testing ammonia test so uh, it includes everything preliminary analysis and then we go on to writing your observations what will what will the changes so if you remember those things you will be able to write those things also in your paper and this is how they are going to evaluate you in your chemistry practicals and they may give you some viva questions as well uh, typically it depends upon the school and the communication with your uh, teacher so they will be giving you some of the uh, uh, viva related question that will be mainly based on your concepts the practical concepts that you had already covered throughout your uh, uh, like throughout the year and same goes in physics as well uh, they will be giving you some uh, some the viva questions based on the experiment that you had and you will be evaluated based on them so 
this was all about the practicals that we had and uh, uh, about uh, the exam in physics also they would they would not give you some question which requires a lot of uh, diagrams and those things instead they will give you some derivations or something else there there will be some optional question which will allow you to attempt all the questions without any hesitation um at that time these at that uh, you let me know if you can't hear me because i'm seeing a message my uh, internet is not stable but anyway uh, at that time these uh, coaching institutes did not have accessible study materials so even if i have wanted to prepare for uh, 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 sir sorry <clears throat> sir yeah. one sec uh, yeah i think there was a brief uh, uh, 30, 30 seconds where you had gone on to silent uh, you talked about the derivatives and uh, we talked about how you wrote your exams uh, after that i think the, the the topic of coaching uh, i think you'll need to start from the beginning sure sure so uh, after like while you know, you are in class 11th and 12th you will find one thing common is everybody is preparing for uh, for getting admission into top institutes like iits nits or triple iits and to get into these institutions you need to qualify jee mains joint entrance exam or je advance to get enrollment into uh, iits so what happened is that uh, even if i wanted to prepare these uh, like coaching institutes who provides uh, like who provide uh, accessible uh, sorry who provide study materials for preparing for je mains or je advance i purchased one of the uh, course from kesans education but they delivered some hard copy books and video lectures but honestly those video lectures were not really accessible for me because they were displaying their concepts and same thing happened as it usually you might you people might also have uh, faced this issue that they would, they would keep on explaining but they would not give the proper description of the uh, task that they are doing so that happened with me that entire you know like course got completely uh, waste, wasted um, but uh, like by by fortune there were a few people like dr tk bansal uh, and uh, dr uma maheshwari these two were there who helped me to prepare for uh physics and uh, like maths for chemistry i had individual individual tut tutor who would come and teach me um so while preparing uh, these like uh, uh, preparing for je one thing that i was told is that okay there are no specific provisions or like a question paper like the changes in the question paper like you have in cbse in je means you will have all types of questions that a, a cited candidate gets so my professor told the dr tk bansal sir told me that uh his internet connection is unstable yeah he is again gone off i think uh... this is the challenge of technology yeah Uh, can you hear me yes. now? Yes, yes, yeah. sir, we can hear you. So you were talking about uh, you were talking about uh, the JEE question papers, and you said that uh, the question there was no separate question paper with alternative questions for blind students. And okay, you, right. You, and you were saying what uh, Mr. T K Bansal advised you. Sure, sure. so i uh, i i went into a strategic way by preparing for only the like concept that i had and i made sure that whatever questions are there that i can do i definitely attempt so like that happened in like in physics chemistry and maths i attempted only those questions which were like sort of that i thought like it's correct and i did not go on taking risk for the negative marking uh, at the end i got like uh, around 80 93 percentile in jee mains and that made me uh, eligible to get enrollment into triple it delhi college where i am studying now uh 
other than these like physics chemistry and mathematics i had one more subject in class 11th and 12th and i i will advise everyone if you are really targeting to go into the engineering field so you will be going to the software field so please don't miss computer science subject in your class 11th or 12th because that is going to be the backbone of your entire uh, uh, like upcoming studies so i had this subject and i was co completely comfortable by uh, at the end of class 12 so when i came here uh, the, those concepts were uh, again taught and uh, like I, it was not that difficult for me in my college to proceed with other students because here everything they manage in you know like in in a like uh, in in, a, in 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 an electronic medium they won't just give hard copies always some for some of the courses they do but usually we have our google classrooms where we'll uh, do our assignments and submit over there so i f did not find it to be any like different different in any other it's like that and uh, like i started participating in the couple of projects and uh, uh, like also the course project uh, in between i participated in some of the hackathons in 2020 and 2021 uh, and for that, I chose the theme based on my interest itself. Um, I also learned like a couple of other technology, like uh, developing you know small small Android applications and uh, like how you go for developing web applications and these things. So in 2021, I got an opportunity to do an internship with Saxo Group of India, and that was the end of my second year. Um, so I did that uh, internship uh, completely. And after that, there, there were a lot of companies visiting to my campus for the recruitment process. Now, here comes the point. Like when the companies are coming, coming for hiring, how do they like, what's their perspective in terms of hiring a person or a candidate with disability? So I tell you, like they are also looking for people who can go there and join them as a team and contribute in their development. What essentially is happening is that uh, you might get to face a lot of issues in terms of accessibility, right? Earlier, like nowadays, like you will be good with like Paytm or Uber or Zomato, but it did not happen all at once. When they released these applications earlier, there were a lot of issues and they were complained and then they got to know, but they did not know how to fix it. They did not know what exactly the needs of a visually challenged people is with a screen reader. So who will exactly tell them all these needs? We have a lot of documentation based on the... Uh, uh, like uh, accessibility requirement and we have like uh, WCG guidelines. But I believe if the like developers themselves are uh, a person with the similar needs, they will be able to make their team more aware about the needs and the upcoming products will be much more accessible than what we see uh, in, the, in, the, in the recent time. So this, this is how the like uh, the, those companies are also looking forward actively to hire the pe people with uh, disability, they have those required skills. So those companies were visiting same in the same way. Uh, it happened with me also. I had par participated in one of the uh, one of their project called Engage. I did complete that uh, uh, like that, uh, that that project. In that project, basically, we had to make a clone of the Microsoft Teams application. Uh, so I made it in Android Studio, and uh, that got accepted. And that's why when they came to the campus, they did not ask me to appear for the test and directly interviews came. So I went for the first interview, second interview, third interview. And after qualifying all of them, they offered me an internship. So in 2022, um, while uh, internship was virtual, but I asked them if I can go and work from their campus. So I went there and they were really happy to you know, know about the stuff because like it's not just about working, but whenever you go to an organization, you have to take care of your mobility of the things that you, the, the communication communication that went through. So it helps them also to understand the needs better and to create that sort of environment, which is completely inclusive and equitable for everyone. Uh, so I worked for, there for like, uh, at the, for the latter part of the inter internship, like for, 20, for the last 20 days, I went there, I worked with them. And after successfully completing the project, they called me for the another interviews. And uh, right after those interviews, I got the pre-placement offer from there. So this was the entire journey of the, you know, like how I went through. And I hope that this would give the students an idea if they want to go for science stream, what exactly they have to go for. I tell you some uh, very, you know, catchy points in a very uh, like short, in a short way so that uh, like you all get to understand. The issue is that like uh, most of the students, around 90-95 students, 95-92-95% students with visual impairment quit their math and science course right after class 8 or class 10. 
why is it happening because there are special schools uh, who might who are uh, still following those traditional you know like uh, like stuff to uh, pro, like uh, teach students math and science for for till class 10th it is completely okay if you go with braille but after class 10th syllabus is huge equations are much more complex than what you had earlier so it becomes really difficult to cope up with braille in your uh, in your upcoming classes second thing is that it creates a barrier between you and your uh, like other students your friends and teachers uh, also you can't write your answer sheet and uh, in braille and give it to the teacher for evaluating so that's the way where you are lacking so if you have a tool let's say a word document as i used to do so why can't you write your answers over there and give give it to the teacher just mail her and she will evaluate you and this is how uh, you will also be evaluated equally as other students are participating in the class now this was one catchy point you have to remember it uh, uh, after class 8th or 10th don't quit mathematics and science if you need resources if you need uh, like uh, like tools how you will pr proceed with them get in touch with me i'll provide you the study materials to prepare for jee that i, ha I have collected from other students and the notes that i use uh, at my uh, when i was preparing them and also um like if you want to go for let's say uh, like abroad education let's say for sat or act so they have special provisions for you like they if you when go for the exam they'll provide you the scribe they'll provide you the extra time uh, extra time and there's a provision for you also to get your scribe if you want and you can apply for those uh, universities and get admission over there that happens in class 11th when uh, during october or november it happens like sat and sat you can definitely give those exams and go for a broad edu education if you want and there are scholarships as well if you uh, perform well there you'll be able to get into them and about the computer science stuff i'll say that please start practicing coding because nowadays as per the new education policy when you say like uh, government has made it in mandatory for every school to teach students coding right from class 6 so tools are completely accessible we have to i mean i am still working on that and uh, in the last 2 3 months like uh, before 2 3 months i uh, mentored around like 40 students whom i used to give uh, extra class like classes based on programming languages and like mathematics and science uh, on my weekends so that became really really helpful for them and earlier when they were uh, planning to quit these subjects earlier and they were not about the opportunity they were not aware about the tools when i told them they were able to uh, completely learn all these things and they found it to be very very interesting i don't think like if the resources are provided if students are motivated enough they will be behind any anymore um they did complete one of the project complete uh, like like successfully where we they, they, all of them designed a game i have maintained a github repo a repository of that as well if you want to have a look i can share that uh, as well so that that point the learning started for them and i want it to get in on like like normal life for everyone whenever students who are there in class 6 7 or 8 they should have access to i mean first point they should have access to a laptop it's really really necessary because once you have laptop you have access to millions of resources you are not limited to just some of the books you wherever you go it it is not uh, like a burden on you to carry this much or books or something uh, whatever you want to study you can access them anytime and you can study um second thing is that that uh, whatever you are studying if you are not getting anything you are finding anything to be difficult discuss it with your teachers discuss it with your friends don't hesitate whether you are in special school or uh, like a regular school don't ever think of quitting these subjects right after class 10 you have a lot of opportunities in this field like uh, people may say that they may go into the humanity stream and get a government job but you really need to look at the stats how many government jobs do we have in india it may be even less than like 3 uh, 3 crores or something but what's the total population of india it's around 125 like 135 140 crores so i mean I, even if you look in terms of like disabled people there are around like more than 30 million people with disability in our india so is it really possible for all of us to get into the uh, like government jobs the answer is quite ambiguous we are not sure we can't say anything but if there are skills that can take your like your own abilities to the next step that can provide you an ability to contribute to the society then why why do you need why do you need to stay uh, you know behind so whenever you find students studying in class 6 to 12 please uh, ask them like 6 to 10 especially that they 
to like if they find these subjects interesting they should not go behind nowadays resources are not limited um, like like uh, awareness is not limited schools are coming to, uh, to like get them access to study um, there are a lot of provisions on inclusive education based on our rbwd act 2016 and uh, there are companies from the private firms as, as well who are actively actively looking for the for hiring people with disability uh, to work with them and creating for creating an inclusive environment for everyone so this is the best time if you want to get started and make your career into this stem field so i guess like i have spoken a lot um, if you have any question you can ask me uh, like i still i am still not done there are a lot of things to share but we have to take care of the time as well so i'll uh, i'll stop here and wait for the questions yeah uh, sort of there was something in the in the uh, chat box where uh, somebody asked like uh, what can you list out the can you list out the resources that you used in uh, say class 11 and 12 and at triple it okay sure so it's not about listing the resources if you want those resources i can get the links uh, like collected that i used in class 11 and 12 and like even in triple it really what all resources i mean it's not like uh, like whatever you are i am studying following here in triple it really you will get everywhere but the thing is that if you know how to access and make them access those resources accessible you will be able to find it yourself and create your own way so that's like for example i'll tell you how it happens so there are courses in and specific books that are taught in triple it really but they might not they might not be available in, in your college where if you go somewhere else but whatever books they are following you have to uh, browse them into like into, into on internet if you don't find it into accessible format there are lot of converters like i mean like according to my experience uh, like whatever books were taught to me uh, and uh, were used at in my college i found them available on bookshare so bookshare is really a great uh, you know you know platform where you can get these uh technology related books available into an accessible format you can download them into a word format and read uh, line by line and it is they, they will be completely accessible i mean for some books there might be some issues uh, because for equation they just paste images so if that is the case you really need to uh, take help from your peers and someone else to get those equations dictated for every chapter it doesn't take more than 15 to 20 minutes but that can be done and this is how uh, you can use those resources and for class 11th and 12th i do have those resources compiled i will share them with uh, uh, sir and sir will distribute to all of you who ever need uh, like need them yeah i think there are two uh, shabnam there are two yes, yes. hands raised yes sir yeah, hi hi uh, this is my this is kumar here yeah, dr Hello, kumar yes yeah 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 first uh, uh, your name i think what is that guy's name what is his name uh, my the name person? is saurav prasad saurav yeah saurav prasad first of all hats off to you there is a great I, i really really congratulate you for all the hard work that you have taken and had determination and guts to pursue the course in science and be a, a a motivator for all these young guys i think after i think kartik sone you are the person at this age doing it and coming here on this and i would also like to take this opportunity to thank george to find you and talk to these people and to just give you a brief uh, thing about me i am a late blind person i am an alumni of iit delhi and iit madras i have done my msc mtech and phd and had been a chemical engineer and a chemist for 20 years in academic research and became a late blind person and had to quit the job because of all these uh, issues in the private but now i am working as a accessible condition making stem subjects accessible and it's been a great work but i have one small query to ask you you talked about bookshare books everything but even in the bookshare all those books there are doc, uh, graphs images in physics chemistry math even in your uh, computer science so how did you tackle them in uh, doing this did you take any type of all text descriptions for them or how did it do it sure sir so i will explain them what happens is like when you do some courses like in data structures and algorithms so you have some like graphs or even when you're doing the course on discrete mathematics at the end of the portion you have a lot of graphs and uh, you have some algorithm based on those graphs so how did i do those things so like whatever portions i could understand from the book i understood it i, I understood them 
and for the portions where we had diagrams or we had like some some sort of graphs or structures that we had to understand so for that i took the help from my friends and from the tas tas are basically uh, teaching assistants for the course so they basically uh, they have been assigned to me like if i have some like uh, like any any kind of issues in terms of accessibility or uh, dictation or anything i need so i get in touch with them so i did tackle those graph related questions and the concepts as well like how does the like for example merge sort for that matter how exactly is it happening so you need to properly draw them and understand how on each like uh, uh, on each part uh, on every iteration how it is getting divided onto two different uh, you know parts and how it is creating a tree so those things i understood with the help of the help of the tas and help of my friends so i guess there's a lot of you know like i mean Uh, i guess like if you are aware about what exactly your needs are i mean we will be able to find the right people and resources as well so whatever issues i have i properly explain it to the instructor and to the uh, to like uh, to the uh, tf uh, tf staff and they they are always ready to provide the help whatever needed and those like uh, graph related questions or i i got them solved through the help of the tas and my friends so Yeah, I understand. But how about you getting an alternate textual descriptions of these images so that the digitally you become independent and you can learn it? You know, because that time you may not be able to find the TA or anybody. So what do you feel if these uh, people can make it more accessible digitally by making an alt text description, alternate textual description of these images? Will it? Do you feel that this will be useful for uh, students like you? Um. i am still not quite sure about it for the level like for the for the figures which are like 2d and i mean it also depends upon how the image has been described if it has been described in such a way that it is able to create that visual picture in your mind if yes it, that's what i'm talking about a verbose a verbose description right yeah, or captain yes. all the things and taking it in the form of uh, describing an image in 1000 words Uh, more than thousand words. That's that's it. I'm talking so about. So definitely, this will be really really helpful for the people who are really who really want to go independent, and who are like uh, who really want to go with the like uh, with with their own self. So I guess this would be a great help for the people if there is an initiative. I mean, uh, like uh, like I I saw some of the projects like that were already running in uh, IIT Delhi. So there they were creating these all text descriptions for the NCERT books for class ninth and tenth. um but i am not sure where exactly that project is right now because it, it's two year uh, now so i'm not no because like, currently i'm working in the company only where we are now working for the american companies and american publishers and colleges where we are creating this complete alternate textual description for all stem subjects physics chemistry math engineering everything so all those uh, the books that you take from pearson this will get included and i'm involved with chemistry and this we go to this such a level that Uh, that a person of caliber in the college or school can understand that so they're working on that angle so uh, so i just want to intervene here uh, if if uh, somebody in the north of india for example need access to books that your company uh, uh, delivers in terms of accessible science books or stem books how can they access it maybe you can put no, it no, in we are not accessing we are we are service providers using ai They are creating just so we are service providers. If anybody wants it, they can send it to us. So we provide both all text descriptions for charges and for NGOs and all those things. We have a separate charge. So we are creating that. So we are a service provider. So so right? can you so can you put in the chat box uh, the email ID to which people can connect with you and your company? Uh, yeah, I think uh, it's quite. I'm on the phone. If I can uh, tell, can somebody you type it for me? I will type it. Please, please tell me. Yeah, my name is Dr. Kumar. Dr. Kumar B S M. Yes. Uh, I am a content and product development advisor. Sorry, say that again. Content and content product yes. development advisor. Okay. Continual Engine C O N. T T for Tamil Nadu. I N U A L. Continual Engine. That's my company. And the mail ID is Kumar dot B S M. K U M A R dot B S M. At Continual Engine dot com. All are one word. Continual Engine is one word. 
Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, and if they want, they can look at the website. That is www.containerengine.com. Right. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. So maybe uh, uh, Shabnam, the next question. We uh, have. I, I had to. I had to ask one question from uh, Kumar sir. Sir, I wanted to know, like, is this image description part done by, like, using AI or manually, like... We are person? using AI. We are using AI to uh, get all the features and everything and automatically it gives out the product. But we have a human uh, SMEs to just check whether for the contextual purpose because just describing image doesn't work. The same structure will be contextually we have to work on that. So we have an SME to check the accuracy of it. Exactly. So I had to, like, I wanted to know, like, what's the extent of the accuracy of those descriptions? Uh, we, have, we, have, we have about, uh, depending upon the uh, complex of the image, we have uh, our AI. Identification of APIs is around uh, 90% accuracy now. That's really wonderful. Yeah. So definitely, okay. I'll get in touch with you. And yeah, and similarly, see. similarly, we are also working on the remediation of PDF using AI. So, and therefore, what happens is we are giving it for all the organizations also. And that what happens is that we are using AI intuitive message. So, what that the time taken is only about 50% or 60 uh, less than that for doing the things and AI enabled. And it are also integrated with our uh, uh, alt text also. So, it is also doing well. And we are using the thing for all sorts of uh, PDF documents, non remitted PDF documents, scanned PDF documents. That also we are working towards that. So we are working and we have already initiated such a step with uh, uh, for uh, the, the, the university is called the GMU. We have a uh, tie with them, so all those things. Great. So uh, I think uh, we can go to the next question. Ashi. Yeah, next question. That's just my, my question is over. I'll just uh, go on. Yeah. I can go. Okay. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Ashutosh, please, aap apna sawal puchhe. Ashutosh, you are not on mute, so you can speak. So you can go okay. to the next. You can okay, Shubhangi Patil, somebody by the name of Shubhangi Patil. Yes, Prasad sir. Good evening. I am Sushant from Maharashtra. I am spending. We can't hear you very clearly. Am I audible, ma'am? Yes, yes, now you are. Bule. Uh, hello, Prasad sir. I am Sushant from Maharashtra. I am turning in 12th standard. I have two small questions. Which are applications are eligible for the mass on the computer software where we can overcome from this? And uh, there are some diagrams. How you overcome? Uh, because there are, I'm learning in the uh, normal school, there are teachers, but they taught in their style, feel that me. So how can I overcome from these situations? Uh, sure, sure, Patel. So for the first part, how, which are the applications that you can use for doing mathematics? So for writing equations or symbols or like uh, any other stuff that you need while uh, doing calculations, Certainly, you can use your Word document, uh, Microsoft Word, and there is a feature called LaTeX. So, in the if you go into the like design tab, you'll press tab tab, you'll find an option called LaTeX. You can browse in Google and you'll get the description how you can you know like go on to that. And by learning those LaTeX commands, you will be able to write mathematics the way other students write uh, on their notebook. And your teacher will also be able to understand and uh, like. Uh, like uh, completely like uh, follow whatever you have written in your Word document. So LaTeX is one thing that you can follow and that will make your task easy. But initially you'll have to give time to practice more and more to get complete, to get your hands on this, you know, like uh, writing mathematics with the help of LaTeX. And for the second part about the uh, diagrams. So that's all we all are, have been discussing till now. Like right now we don't have that much any other like appropriate solution. One of the solution might be to prepare the physical diagrams of every chapter but that is not uh, uh, I mean for all the books that are like for the common that all 
followed we can create for all the books that come into the market it's not uh, like uh, all possible to get access to to uh, diagrams in physical format so what other things are there so they are looking for all this all text description that uh, kumar sir also talked about that their company uh, is working and i stem also created one of the tools based on ai that they solve your problem so you can install i stem application and if you have some pdf math books you can try this book will convert your book into uh, your pdf book into an accessible format but accuracy and precision those are the things that we are still not sure yet but you can definitely give it a try and see if that works what about uh, iit delhi uh, uh, that uh, ss tech uh, department uh, what about their uh, uh, 3d uh, their diagrams they, they have been creating stuff stuff for uh, ncert uh, do they have enough resources they can 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 uh, sushant kind of get in touch with them directly for help yes sir so uh, for that i will have to communicate to the like to the to the team because i am not currently updated about what where exactly their project is but they were actively uh, working at that time uh, i'll 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 communicate with them what exactly is the update on this and i'll definitely inform you where the progress and how can students avail that facility from them sir can you post your uh, email id or uh, sure sure i'll post in the, on the chat kindly share this yeah this was shushant who asked you the question shubhangi patel yeah it's it's by the name of shubhangi patel but it's shushant oh okay okay yeah, yeah. um uh, ashutosh are you there can you ask your question now ashutosh i don't know there's something wrong with the on it's something at your end you're not able to we're not able to hear you can you unmute yourself again and try okay we can't hear we'll come back to you why don't you maybe log out and log in again and see if it works um ruhin there's somebody ruhin yeah uh, am i audible yes yes you are uh, i'm ruhin and i'm studying in class 11 now i am uh, also like i have taken science and i am also a j aspirant so my i had two questions first is that uh, for j preparation as it's all all you know and the syllabus is very vast and uh, for uh, visual impact student it takes more time to do 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 the same thing which others do mm -hmm. and um, uh, and uh, uh, i have like even though a chapter i have practiced so many times still um, it's a problem in physics and math and chemistry so if there is any tips for that and how you did it and the second question was um in i at triple it delhi how are the other than books and all what is the accessibility pro uh, facilities provided by them okay sorry uh, can you please tell your name i, I couldn't get it ruhin ruhin okay are you hi. h i n yeah hi ruhin so it's really great to know like that you are you, you have taken science in class 11th and you are going ahead so to take your first question um about uh, handling uh, this like like resources uh, in to class 11th so would you do one thing get in touch with me i have like pasted my email address in, on the chat i'll provide you the study materials that i used during je preparation i ask you to my team who will take you to uh, one of the coaching institutes so what happens is they will provide you live lectures and those people uh, professors from there uh, whoever are teaching they will they will definitely guide you on one on one classes and those classes will definitely be useful for you for to prepare for je for the extra uh, actually, time actually i have time. already taken coaching uh, i'm i just wanted to ask your tips on how to approach physics and maths um okay sure sure so i'll again repeat the same thing that if there are some diagram based questions that, that requires a lot of time so be a bit practical put all your efforts what you can do in terms of the other questions that you can solve within the limited time um obviously it takes a little bit more time for understanding the concepts but it is only till the point point you are starting in the midway you will realize when, when you are like is just like like uh, like uh, somewhere september october just keep on practicing more you practice more convenient it will it will become for you as the time go ahead 
and uh, like when you are you, know, go, you go in class 12 you'll find the things to be you know comparatively easy at it is in class 11th because obviously uh, like class 11 11th syllabus is a bit uh, vast as compared to class 12 so like i'll tell you like whatever you can do just put all your efforts um for both physics and chemistry and for the exams uh, like to pursue for the to target je don't bother much about the diagrams question right now because um if you focus more like if you can then definitely go ahead for that but it will be good if you can you know like to take your focus completely onto the question that you can do if you are able to solve let's say 25 questions out of 30 um you'll be able to like get much more good grade than what others get and that will make you completely eligible to get in any of the top engineering colleges and about the accessibility of the triple it really so i'll tell you that here the institute institute is really really cooperating they'll provide you um the tas for every subject that you take so if you have an issue we can get in touch with them and get your your issues resolved and for the time for also they will like they will provide you the time there is no like facts and rules which are written over here you need to know what your needs are you will be you have to tell inform the the administration and your instructions uh, and your instructors they will provide you all your needs that you need but you need to be completely aware what you need and why you need so whenever when i get into enroll into a new course i mail uh, the professor individually and i tell them that i require these 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 are the needs that i require in the exam that first of all question paper should be in a word or pdf format secondly there should be a reader who can read because sometimes there are images in the question paper that i can't read so i need a, a reader while uh, while i am doing my exam and thirdly uh, i need uh, some extra time for the exam probably one by third of the total duration and this is because uh, listening to the questions and then writing the answers costs completely co comparatively more time than usual so these are the things that i write whenever i have to you know apply for needs and they do provide all those things so remember the what your needs are you will have to tell your administration your institute what you require and definitely if the needs are legitimate no one is going to deny you from that Thank you so much for your input. Sure. Hello, am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Yes, yes, you are audible. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, sir, I have a uh, question. Uh, sir, how can how do you manage uh, memory part of maths? Like uh, uh, we have a very very long number, like uh, 112 plus 102 plus 103 divided by 224, something like that. So during my like uh, entire chat, I talked somewhere between like between like somewhere about it that uh, while I was switching from braille to digital format, same issue that I had because in braille, we have both reading and writing uh, like facilities simultaneously. By one hand you can just reading and uh, you you can just read and on the other line you can just write. But in a word document you have to go up and down and like comprehend the line once again. So this is all about practice. If you go ahead, I mean, you'll have to give it a try because it was difficult for me as well in the beginning. But as the time proceed, uh, like at the time went, later on I became like completely comfortable with this. So whatever screen reader you're using, I'll advise you to like go with it, practice more and more, and uh, as your ears go get more tuned to it, as you are gets more, you get more like uh, 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 used to of this. It will really help you in the long way. So that will be my, uh, you know, suggestion to keep on going ahead with your computer and uh, with the screen reader while writing math and solving the problems. Yeah, my my experience here is concentration and practice. Yes, you got to keep practicing. You're right, and the second is concentrate, and then your mind comes into tune to remember. Uh, in the first. One or two months, it might be difficult, but I think if you if you stick to it, you will succeed. Okay, sir. Sir, my second question is: Are you totally blind or partially? Totally. Uh, no, 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 oh, sir. Yeah, yeah, oh, he, sir. yeah. Sir, is totally I'm, blind. I am also totally blind. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Yeah. Okay, okay. Musammil, unmute. करके आपका सवाल पूछे. Yes. Good evening to all IV team. Good evening. And, uh, Hey, Saurav, I am congratulating you and after hearing a good a story and uh, it uh, inspired me a lot at, from the same institute you are you studied in uh, NIH. 
and what about your juniors are they following the same path uh, or becoming the this uh, je aspirant so there are around 30 to 40 students whom i have been mentoring for the last one year and they are mainly uh, in front class 6 to 10th uh, i have been teaching them programming languages and sometimes we have classes for math and science on like weekends probably so yeah i mean they are not right now they are not they are like they are not willing to quit this of the subjects on any case so i hope that they'll go ahead with these courses but about the students who are like uh, in nibh and like going ahead with like uh, who are in class 9th and 10th so i regularly get call from them and they are asking about like how i went and what are the resources in class 10th and after class 10th where should they apply to you know uh, conveniently pursue math and science in class 11th and 12th so yeah they are also interested and a lot of people have been following after that and i'm really happy about it great great um, and uh, what what about uh, like uh, uh, the english as as you know as you are aware that in uh, in anive school it is a uh, basically a hindi medium school so uh, are you planning or are you giving some tips how to improve the english so, there for so, so the know, like i will say that uh, like english is something uh, i will honestly tell that it's not always about you know learning grammar or something doing stuff and it's all about the environment where you stay if you are used to up listening to a lot of people it, it it involves only three things reading writing speaking and listening four things okay so whenever you are continuously listening and like speaking so your ears get tuned to them and you are completely like you you are sort of like convenient on speaking and you don't care much about like stuff and you just go ahead so till class 10th i also used to do a lot of grammar and those things but when i came into class 11th and uh, everyone around me were speaking english in school and the students and teachers all of them so uh, eventually it came so i would advise like just keep on listening to you know english podcasts and their like news channels who uh, provide news in english so you can follow them also sometimes debate and these things this will really help you to get grasp and i, I would say that uh, that frankness when you speak and about the schools i would say yeah definitely there are schools who have, who have been following in like, uh, like their syllabus in, in in hindi and this is also one of the barrier you know I, sometimes i realize because uh, this is about the resources only because if i have if i want to get access to an accessible resource for class 11 resources are available in english but are they in hindi and other languages no can we create for them maybe maybe not because there are less less recommendation less people so schools also need to you know think in this direction and at least follow their math and science in in english part so that when students go ahead in class 11 and 12 they don't have much to tackle and you know again uh, cover up. okay okay god bless you dear sora yeah thank you okay nagraj Good evening, sir. Uh, thank Good you evening, for uh, inspiring and curious story. I have one uh, question to ask you regarding G. So, sir, the exam should be given on computer, right? So, at that time, did you use screen reader or uh, use scribe? So, what are government provisions for persons with visual impairment? Oh, so okay. I'll, I'll tell you honestly be 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 you know completely uh, careful about it don't don't believe on the scribe that the like that, that the like uh, examination examining body is going to provide you the thing is that when you go to the center sometimes the scribe that you provide they're not even able to spell some word because it happened in the first attempt of je with me so the scribe that was provided by the center he came to me he came to read the question paper and he was studying the question paper in this manner like the e q u i l i b r i u m and this is how they were, he was spelling most of the words because he was not able to like name them and i asked him like what do you do what exactly so he said like he was in the in his uh, second year of uh, graduation pursuing some like humanities subjects and he was not much aware about these terminologies and symbols that we had so then i talked to the uh, to the like uh, coaching superit superintendent but th that was the middle of the exam and nothing could be done at that time and entire first attempt got spoiled but for the second attempt uh, there is a provision by the nta okay that you can get a scribe who is one class below than you and he must have maths as 
one of his mandatory subject so if you are giving a je exam so make sure that your scribe is from class 11 and he can be from science stream or from a commerce stream as maths one of his mandatory subject only then he'll be able to go with you and you can get your own scribe you can so that there is a there's a like uh, like com comfortness while you're writing exam you don't have any kind of hesitation or something so these things matters a lot so be careful about it and whenever you get your scribe so make sure these things are there and also about this screen reader um i am not sure if they provide screen reader because uh, in my like uh, the the uh, like coaching uh, sorry the exam examination center where the, the the one which was allotted to me they said we don't have any such facility for the screen reader in these things but uh, you can get a scribe for the exam i mean uh, the thing is that you can get a scribe you can ask him to read the questions but make sure that scribe is taken by you and you specify the the eligibility for the scribe so there won't be an issue while you are writing the exam and you'll be conveniently able to pass and go ahead thank you so much yeah ashwin hello sir i'm ashwin from class 9 i am from chennai hi ashwin nice sir actually um sir i want to know like how you attempted uh, trigonometry questions like like did you use log tables like did a reader read it up to <laughs> why do you need why do you need log tables for solving trigonometry for class 10 <laughs> there is no need of that right there is just some some you know like sine sine angle formula and you have equations you have sometimes uh, no i think uh, like i think like application no no i think i think these are two different questions i think one question is about how do you deal with trigonometry Okay. Okay. The, uh, the second question is, how do you handle log tables? No, Am I sir. Right? Like what I'm trying to ask is, like, uh, how, like, I want to know how he attempted trigonometry. Like, did he use log tables or did he use any kind of calculator? That's what I basically want to know how he attempted trigonometry. No, for attempting trigonometry, you don't need any calculator or things which are in class nine, ten, ten. Right? You have just some equations, and you need to solve them yourself. Let's say if you have some equation called. uh sin square theta uh, square of square square of square of this question may be from the point of view of 11 because in some trigonometric you may have to use the angle theta value yeah 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 so that time for you while doing calculus we have those sort of questions so if you are asking in terms of calculus i'll be able to tell you Yeah. I'm not sure what is calculus. Actually, I'm in class. No, that's all. Yeah, he's in class nine. So he's talking about the trigonometric that uh, thing where if a sine thirty five is given or sine forty is given, how to get the data from there? Yes. So, so Ashwin, the see the thing is that in class nine for calculating the value of like let's say you don't have actually random angles. They'll provide you some specific angle like sine thirty, sine forty five, sine sixty, and sine ninety. Sometimes you may have some question like sine seventy five. But that is in class seven, eleventh. When you split it in sine forty-five plus thirty, or sine thirty plus forty-five, or you may have some angle uh, of sine, let's say one thirty-five. Then you split it in ninety plus forty-five. So those questions are in class eleventh, not in class ninth. In class ninth, you have questions like mainly which are like sine thirty, sine zero, sine or I mean any of the angle can be there. So the, I mean I mean any any of the. Uh, trigonometric ratio can can be there like sin cos or anything and angles are definite like they are 0 30 45 60 and 90 and you have a table for them okay and you need to remember each of the value so this is called like trigonometric the, the the value table that you need to remember for for every ratio like for sin for cos for tan and for sec for cosecant and also for the cot so for every all these ang for all these ratio you have a table okay and you need to remember for the uh, the value for the uh, for all the for these specific angles like 0 sin 0 0 sin 30 uh, 1 by 2 1 si sin 45 1 sin 60 root 3 by 2 sin 91 so you need to remember and have these things in mind in order to solve the question okay and this is not a log table this is just simple you need to remember basically the uh, value versus angle table that you need to remember for some, only some angles and the angles are 0 30 45 60 90 yeah, for every this, ratio and i think with practice this again uh, the more sums you solve the easier you it is to remember yes and in fact let me tell you as, as you said again the values are there for uh, sines are 30 and 60 you just have to use a equilateral triangle with all 60 de degrees draw an altitude so half the base So and then from that use Pythagoras theorem, you will get it. Two a, two a, a. That's all, and you get the thing. 
and that's how he's drawn over the table. So once you get sign 30, cos 30 will be found. So it's a simple thing techniques which Saurabh is talking yeah, about. Yeah, in fact, and in and in fact, all the these derivations have been given in the book in CRT text. Got it. Got it. You mm. can follow them. Thank you. Thank you. Chatur, 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 please yeah. ask your question. Yes. Yeah, that's my official email address. My name is Bhupendra. So I am a father of a, a six-year-old daughter who is visually impaired by birth, uh, bilateral and ophthalmia. Uh, she goes to. I am from Bangalore. She goes to first standard. So I wanted to check with the. Uh, anyone who is uh, kind of you know able to assist us uh, definitely this discussion is more around you know pursuing uh, science education uh, my daughter I, the challenge which i face we heard about uh, scribes uh, coming and assisting uh, uh, in, during the examination so my daughter goes to a normal school uh, the, while uh, we had covid she was remotely working i was assisting her and i knew what uh, is being taught in school but from the time she started going to school, the challenge which I face, I don't know uh, what is being taught in school. Uh, we uh, definitely we are asking what is being taught and the school is also cooperative. But uh, the, the kind of uh, uh, help which I used to give to my daughter is una I am unable to give. And I somehow feel that she's unable to read the way she was doing it before. And, uh, and, and, and now she's exposed to higher calculation in terms of addition, subtraction, multiplication. These concepts are being introduced to her. her. So mm -hmm. what would you suggest that how should I proceed to tackle the situation? Shall I go work as a scribe <laughs> for her in the class? Or how should I tackle the situation? Because sometimes I, I feel helpless where I want to assist her and, and and at the same time, I am not a special teacher. So I struggle to, you know, make her understand certain concepts. So how should I proceed? Is this for me? Yeah, Saurabh, you can uh, give your- You can give a okay. shot. Yes, sure, sure. sure, sure. So see, this is a very common problem. Okay, in school, what happens is teachers are coming and they're writing a lot of long, long calculations on board. Other students are just noting down them on their notebooks. But for a student who is visually challenged, this really becomes difficult. And there are like, what exactly can be done in this case? There can be a communication with the teacher. I mean, I'll tell you what happened in my, in my case. So uh, the teacher used to allot someone to sit with me and explain me those uh, calculations which are being written on board. But definitely it will be difficult uh, like to cooperate because he has to write his own notes also and he has to explain me as well. He, they used to do that, though that model, that, 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 that system was not really that much helpful. But yeah, at the end of the class, I used to make sure whatever has been covered. I used to ask my friends to share their notes with me, a picture of their notes. And I would go home and ask my like other fellows, like my uh, volunteers who used to come to read those portions for me. And whatever I had missed, I used to uh, like write them up and update whatever I have been and get, get updated to what all have been covered in the class. So maybe... Uh, yeah. Sort of one sec. Uh, I think uh, the child here is uh, about six or seven years old uh, or maybe eight years old class six, one or two six yeah six okay, years wait 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 sorry sorry so she you're talking years. about somebody who's 12 13 you know yeah no no i, I thought like she's in grade six that's why no, no, uh, no, i got no, 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 no six year old okay so like for now i would advise that uh it will be good that you know at home when she comes back from school you provide individual time to her to teach those things. Like, I mean, not a lot of things have been covered, but just reiterate whatever has uh, have been covered in school. You can have a chat with a teacher. They can update you about it. And uh, since there are a lot of students in class, and I know that teachers are also in sometimes in hurry, but definitely you can ask teachers to uh, co cooperate and provide extra like care to the child. And when she comes back, dedicate some time with her and make sure whatever... Uh, things are getting mm -hmm. delivered in class she is also able to cope up with them but as she grow you know like uh, as she grow older uh, like she'll be able to manage the stuff herself and our goal is also to make her independent so that she is able to make her own ways make her own assumptions make her own techniques but i would ask uh, uh, Josh, sir, also to add on to this. Uh, yeah, I was, I, I, I was, I was just wondering whether it is also important for her to side by side learn Braille, so that she can use uh, the Braille resources also 
uh, in the learning process? Yes, sir. She's uh, being trained on Braille uh, and she's catching up on speed. So she's parallelly learning Braille as well. Yeah. So I think you'll need to be a little patient. And, uh, uh, you know, when I was, for example, when I was growing up, meaning I'm also visually impaired from childhood, and uh, my parents used to have a lot of communication with the teachers. Uh, there was a time when it used to be uh, on a weekly basis, you know, uh, kind of closely monitoring. My mother used to be um, uh, coming to the school and talking to the teachers. So that had two, two, two impacts. One, it was that the teachers became more interested and uh, uh, more involved with uh, me. The second is my, my mother also was kind of uh, informed enough to be able to deal with the situation at home. So, uh, so I think these are things, there are no formal processes in place as of now. And uh, therefore as parents and as family, I think we just need to kind of innovate and, uh, and, and uh, kind of go along. Um, and and uh, so I think the skills that the kid needs to learn, you, you're already onto it, which is Braille. And then there are tools to learn arithmetic, like, like uh, the Taylor frame and so on, which uh, is, is Taylor frame something that you've heard of and that you've been using? I haven't heard of it. So, uh, uh, Saurabh, did you use Taylor frame when you were small? Definitely. I would advise you to, you know, like let her practice on Taylor frame because she'll be able to write numbers and do the calculations on her, by herself. And it will also help her to develop that concept of pictorial memory if she goes with it. So please uh, like provide this tool to her. I'll connect you to one of the organization called Vision, Vision Empower. They, they have been also working on this field actively and they're also based in Bangalore. So like uh, get in touch in my email address. I'll definitely connect you to, the, to them. And I guess they'll be able to assist you more onto this. Sure. So how it is being spelled? Tail of frame, is it? No, Taylor, no, Taylor, Taylor. 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 Okay. Got it. Taylor, so, not, a, uh, not the spelling. It's T-A-Y-L-O-R, right? Yes. T-A-Y-L-O-R. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, sir. Thank so for so those much. who do not know what is that, can you please uh, tell a few lines about that frame, Taylor frame? What so is basically, that? it has like, it has like small, small cells. The way we have, you know, like cells in a... In like grid kind of thing there are a lot of cells and you you have some types we call them types so what you do you insert those types onto those cells and you write numbers and there are different like uh, like ways to write like in honest by using a single type you can write all the numbers uh, like from one to uh, nine then like 11 to whatever you want like one to nine the zero one zero to nine you can write through a one type if you had to write a double digit number you'll have to use two types so this is how it is used. Um, basically, if you search like Taylor frame, you'll get the picture of that. Uh, and I guess uh, you can also uh, get it uh, like delivered from some of the institutions who prepare this tool. Okay, sir. Thanks. Yeah, and I think uh, a subject like mathematics and science is a lot of conceptual understanding. So uh, the foundations are very critical. And, um, and, and uh, also the practical application uh, there's another young man I spoke to recently who studied uh, science and maths and now is in Canada. Uh, he, you know, uh, started his maths and science study, math study on Taylor frames. And as Saurav uh, evolved, he also moved on to technology by the time he got into middle school. So um, uh, different people have taken different routes, but uh, this is definitely doable and uh, blind people have studied well and done well. So it's worth investing all that we can to, to get your daughter up and running. Thank you so much, sir. Really helpful with these discussions, sir. Yeah. And, and uh, you can also note our number and email ID down. So if you want to talk to us at any point of time, uh, you know, uh, whatever we can help, we'll also be happy to do so. Great, sir. Uh, I yeah. I would appreciate that if you can put that in the chat. Otherwise, I can write it down too. It is in the yeah. chat. If you go right on top, I've put the number and the email ID both. The number is the toll-free number. Maybe, ma'am, I joined a little late, so I can't see past uh, history of uh, the chat I'll, that I see. Don't worry. I'll just re type here. Sure, so just sure. Email, just, put the, just put the email ID, uh, Shabnam. Yeah. 
Yes, that would be great. Got it, ma'am. Okay. Right, any other questions? Yeah, we have uh, some uh, sort of, his name is, one minute. Parande, Pal, Pal, uh, Padave. Pa Padave. He says he has uh, passed his 12th standard in arts and he's interested in technology and he wants to work in the technology field and what kind of study should he do? Again, a very, you know, serious issue. I had to, I had to get like, I got multiple cases like this where students pass their class 12 and they wanted to go ahead with technology. What are the fields? Can they go for like top engineering colleges? For that, they have to qualify like JE means or JE advanced, which requires mathematics and science in your class 11, 12. So simply you can't for that. But if you really are interested and want to contribute, if you had math and science till class 10, definitely there are institutes who provides you a course on like bachelors of computer application, BCA. So you can do that and followed after, after that, when you have skills, you can apply to companies and they'll consider your profile for sure. So you can just browse on Google, like like BCA courses um, mm -hmm. with like, like some of the colleges will be there who, who will ask maths to be mandatory to look after, but there are institutions who will provide, who will give, give you the opportunity to pursue BCA, even if you have had maths till class 10. Okay, Ashutosh also has his hand raised. She asked the question earlier. Do you want hey. to say something? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, so which version should we use for uh, writing math on the Microsoft Word? Uh, it's latex, latex. Uh, just wait, okay, 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 okay. okay. Microsoft version, right? You're yes, ask, asking about Microsoft like Word version. So it, yes, it, it, it was available from like to Microsoft 2019. If you have that version, you'll be able to completely read and write. So like if you uh, means, uh, uh, means be, uh, below 2019 there was no any method in microsoft word no you can still write those things but they sometimes they are not correctly read out because it just it italicizes each of the characters and it becomes panicking and also i'm not sure if latex support was there before 2019 because when i started using it i found it there and before that i did not like to find those things even other students who like came here earlier they were also uh, using Microsoft 2019 itself. So you can install this software and uh, go ahead with this. I guess that, that should work. Means yeah. 2019 version uh, fully support maths. Yes. 20, 20, 2019 or ahead, like 2020, 2021, you can go further maths. So, so, so one, clari one clarification here. Uh, this is who? This is uh, Nagaraj, is it? Ashutosh. Ashutosh. Ashutosh, yeah. One clarification. You will have to use Microsoft Word 2019 but that will have to be in conjunction with latex l a t e x right yes yes yeah latex is is an add on uh, is 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 something that you'll have to download from the internet i think is that correct like there's a like it should be there by default but if it is not there then go on to the uh, like uh, press alt and keep on pressing shift plus tab you'll reach a section called add ons there you can type latex and get the library installed but it should be there by default just press alt plus j uh, go on to the design tab then press tab tab you'll be able to find two three ways like one is latex and there is other one as well you can use latex and proceed ahead so latex okay. is part of microsoft office yes okay that's very good thank you so much sir yeah, thank you. And Absolutely. there are tutorials as well available on internet. If you browse, recently there were a few people, there is a channel called Digital Drishti. So they created a lot of tutorials on latex and writing math. So I would advise you to search latex digital drishti on YouTube. You'll get their tutorials and you'll be able to understand how exactly to follow, what commands to apply, everything is there. So that will be helpful for you. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. There's yeah, sure. nobody, anybody else wants to ask a question? Please go ahead. No, nobody has a question. Well, uh, uh, any closing words, uh, uh, Saurabh, or uh, shall we close? So definitely we are good to go. Again, I would, I would like to uh, congratulate everyone who have taken science and going ahead with their, their uh, journey.
just be patient and uh, sometimes it may take time but definitely you'll be able to make it as others have done and in in case like i have pasted my email address you need if you need any kind of support sort of that can be done from my side get in touch uh, and this is how we can go ahead by helping each other and we will be able to increase this participation of the visually challenged people in all fields equally as it is as it should be there right. so that's exactly what i want to uh, that's the word that i want to embrace yeah so sort of uh, thank you very much for uh, giving your time i would also like to thank linkedin for having connected us and uh, uh, i think i thought it was a wonderful session and i think uh, you made it uh, easy for all of us to kind of understand the way you uh, went on this journey and i think it will inspire a lot of people we'll be putting this uh, session on youtube in another week's time so it will be there for uh, future people young people also to come and uh, uh, listen and uh, let me tell you uh, there are a number of people now who have actually chosen to do maths and science and have actually made covered good ground so it is uh, no longer a difficult uh, territory to get into and i believe maths and science also uh, has a direct impact on how your brain develops uh, because it's it's a, it's a different part of the brain that is used to kind of uh, uh, tackle maths and science so uh, you know it's it's a good thing to uh, pursue even if you don't want to become a maths professor or uh, uh, science professor uh, you know it's good to do mathematics so thank you very much ladies and gentlemen and uh, till we meet again